Hello everyone and welcome to the last of the unit reviews and the third time I'm recording this video because every time something has gone wrong with this recording. So first of all we're going to be talking about BART today. The final of the units but definitely one that I feel he has some really cool value to him mainly because he's not like the other two units. Yeah this was a really cool Xeno Gears event. We got a high magic damage dealer, we got a high physical damage dealer, and last but not least, we got a cool little chainer evader support unit with some really cool abilities. So taking a look at his sprite, I actually really like his sprite, you know, the fire element to it, as well as a giant cool mecha transformation limit burst that's super awesome. Nothing not to like here, just in general kind of like this unit. So I'm happy I was able to get him, and it does complete my set of the Xenogear units. Not to brag too much, but yeah, you know, maybe I can brag a little bit. So first of all, let's talk about Bart. So first of all, his Trust Mastery reward. That's not his Trust Mastery reward. There we go. Uh, still using blue stacks, which is a little bit laggy. First of all, his Trust Mastery is a whip, 135 attack with 50% Machine Killer on it, which is great because it stacks with his Machine Killer that he already has in his kit, making him kind of a little bit more deadly to machines. Next up is his Super Trust Mastery, which is pretty darn good. 60% attack when equipped with a whip. It kind of, I mean, th there are many Trust Masteries out there that I say, hey, this is good for other units. This is pretty much only good for this guy. But, you know, it's not terrible. It also has a limit burst fill rate up of 100%, as well as 50% extra machine killer. So he can stack some very nice machine killers. But really, what is in this guy's kit that is so cool? Well, first of all, I have mine set up to be a little bit more of an evade unit. Um, not completely evade, although I think he <coughs> excuse me, uh, could be set up to be an evade unit pretty darn easily. Whoops, accidentally stopped the music there for auto clicking off. It's fine, though. So... In his kit, naturally, he does have a 201 attack base, which is... Oh, yes, I was also looking at Sephiroth today because I needed to see something about him for something that someone had commented to me, but they were not completely correct. So let me just scroll down and bring up that information real quick. Because Bart has a base attack of 201 with 50 extra points. Now, his limit burst, which can be enhanced from his kit, is basically a 1370% going up to 1660% attack. So, you know, he has a fairly good attack for that high of a limit burst. But the other thing is that his limit burst does an AoE 5 turn debuff for defense and spirit of 70%. Which is pretty strong, seen as in his kit, he has a lot of ways to activate his own limit burst very, very quickly. So a 70% defense and spirit debuff is just, in general, kind of nice to have. Now, in his kit, getting back to it, he has a lot of passives for HP, attack, especially attack when he's equipped with a whip. So you might as well equip his TMR to him he also has a lot of HP, defense, and spirit buffs, which is really kind of nice because it makes him, in general, more survivable beyond just the, you know, the dodge ability. But if you do decide to make this guy a dual-wielding dodge unit, then it's pretty cool that he does have a 24 MP 3-turn plus 100% chance to be targeted, 3-turn self 200% limit burst fill rate, which is great for the party. I mean... Uh, oh, sorry, I meant just for him. He has some other limit burst fill for the party, which is kind of nice. But a 200% fill for him with that kind of 70% debuff on his limit burst is really nice. And since he's an evade unit, he can potentially soak up a lot of single target attacks without having to bring a physical tank, which is kind of cool. It's just kind of cool. 
From there, he has many different hard-hitting, well, some general hitting attacks. But what is really interesting, is, besides his 5% MP recovery, is that he has an auto-use self plus 80% attack ability, which is, you know, good to generally just have at all times. From there, in his 6-star kit, he does get some chaining abilities, a fire ability that is 8 hits, 8 frames, 560%. That also does a 100% single target fire physical hit per 5 turns. So basically, he does his chaining ability, and then he activates a, you know, every turn he basically hits the enemy for some extra fire damage. That's kind of cool. I haven't seen an ability like that. You see high use where it's a multi-hit, then a chain, then basically a finisher at the end, but not an ability that acts over multiple turns. I wonder if we'll see this kind of ability in the future more. It might be a new thing for attackers. Very cool. Very much like it. An Earth one hit, 300% AoE hit that also debuffs 50% earth resistance, AoE for 5 turns, works good with the other two units that came with this banner. A wind 12 hit at 12 frames, which I believe changed with Sephiroth. At 300% it also AoE debuffs for 50% wind resistance, but the actual chaining ability is AoE. So that's potentially really cool for Arena. I might take, Barts might be really, really cool <laughs> in Arena. Now he has a 460% single target, 12 hit at 12 frames, water attack that also heals for 2000 HP and 20 MP. You know, it, it does some MP regen and some HP regen, and that's okay. That's okay. Anyway, moving on, he has a 62 MP, 100% blind attack that also AoE 5 turn debuffs the enemy's attack and magic for 60%, which is really decent. He has a natural wielding two weapons, which is great. And now his women, weapon selection is a little bit limited between fists, um, whips, which his TMR fits nicely on him, and regular swords. So it does give him some options for what he will do. Now getting into his seven star kit is a little bit more exciting because in his 7-star equip for equipping his TMR, he gets 100% sleep and confuse resistance, 1.3 limit burst damage, and auto uses a self 10 limit burst crystal fill, which is cool. A, for dual wielding, which you're always going to be dual wielding with this guy, 60% attack when dual wielding, 150% damage modifier for one ability, 240% for his other abilities, and that's really cool. So it basically makes his weaker, you know, chaining abilities stronger. So that, in general, just makes him stronger. His 68 MP abilities are the things that I really like. Now, these are all 68 MP for Fire, Water, Wind, and Earth. Give that element to another party member for five turns. And I believe it also can be himself, too. But probably, you know, support, you might want to give it to someone else. Be nice and friendly. That unit will also get a 200 MP heal split over five turns. So, hey, 40 MP per turn is pretty nice. Also, it gives that target five limit burst crystals, which is really, really cool. Just powering up someone else's limit burst, giving them an element, and yeah, giving them some extra MP for multiple turns seems really good for support. What is cool as well is his AoE evade attack for one max th available for three turns and a three turn aoe 200 percent limit burst fill rate so it gives the party you know limit burst fill rate and makes gives them like an auto mirage for one attack and that can be a big difference if your enemy is going to hit you with you know uh, a threshold attack that's one big attack and you can evade it because it's just physical super super great now his two chaining now his big cooldown ability, which is his chaining ability, which is eight hits at twelve hundred percent, is eight hits, but at six frames, which basically puts it in the CG Reagan family, which is, you know, a really decent chaining family, so twelve hundred percent feels okay. But the thing I love 
in his kit, which is really cool, is his other cooldown ability, which gives himself a 250% attack boost, which is so cool. Even if you have a lower attack on this guy, 250% kind of makes up for it. It's four turns. It gives himself a four turn plus 100% stat buff resist, so he can't be stat buff. Re, um, deep stat debuffed is what I meant to say. 12,000 HP heal split over four turns, so, you know, 3,000 HP per turn is pretty good. 320 MP split over four turns. Extra MP is always great. 80 of it, sure. And a self fill 28 limit burst crystals, which is just a full limit burst, which is really nice. From there, just some extra HP attack and a natural limit burst fill rate of 150% means that this guy, how can I say, basically he can do, um, you know, a lot of limit bursts throughout the entire fight. So we're going to do a bit of a showcase of him, not too, too long, but also enough that we can, you know, show off a lot of his cool stuff. So first we'll just do his big ability, because why not get this party started? So now he will get that extra HP and MP recovery per turn, which is really cool. He also boosts himself from 1300 attack up to 1834 attack, so that feels pretty decent. Let's see what his limit burst does. So of course this would be normally doing the debuff, but since it's the training dummy, we can't necessarily do that. Yeah, 5 million feels pretty decent. Feels pretty decent for a unit that I'm really not doing. Using for physical damage necessarily, but... And his big chaining ability... Yeah, about 6 million. So he can still dish out some pretty darn decent damage, and he has a lot of different ways that he can do that whether it's his chaining abilities, whether it's his physical abilities, uh, he can do some really just fairly decent damage, all things considered. Considering that I do not have him equipped for attack. Now, the other thing that he can do is his elemental immune. So as you can see, he can give it to anyone. He could even give it to himself. Because in this case scenario, he's a little bit selfish, but that's fine. It means that he can, and since the elemental that he gifts to people is five turns, that's, you know, enough time that you can essentially cycle through units and give a lot of units that elemental power. And I gotta say, I think that's great. I think that's just really strong support, especially if he's just constantly dodging physical attacks. That's cool. So, out of all the units uh, that we got in the Xeno gear, yeah, Faye and Ellie are definitely more exciting because they can just dish out a massive amount of damage. But I really got to say that Bart's ended up being super cool. Only Not only as a debuffer, but also as giving elemental imbunes because nobody really can do quite what Bart's can do. And... That, I think, is super valuable, so pretty cool to have his 7 star. Um, hopefully we start seeing more units like this that can do this type of elemental imbune, so we don't have to worry so much about, you know, when's that lightning, when's that water, when's that wind weapon that I've been waiting for going to show up? Now you can just get regular high stat items and just give them the element of your choice, which also makes it very flexible for fights. So I gotta say, Cool, cool banner. Uh, Bart's doesn't feel that much like a train, or a, I was going to say a <laughs> troll rainbow, and it came out a trainbow. There you go. Something new coined. All right, so I will check you guys all next time.